trademark Dean Lingley, Hoopston, Illinois. Hey, I was just trying to get a hold of you. I didn't know if you right now on uh, Facebook they have a uh, uh, Facebook Live thing going here. Yahoo News has got it going about the landing on Mars, and I thought maybe you might want to know that. You can get on there and ask some questions. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Hi, Mark. My name is Nancy, N-A-N-C-Y, Gusler, G-U-S-L-E-R. I'm from Rocky Mount, Virginia. I just watched your Flat Earth video, and you left your phone number, and you said nobody uses phones to call anymore. I just thought I'd call you and say hi, and I loved your video, dude. Good job. I believe in Flat Earth. <laughs> There's a lot of things I believe in. You have a great day. God bless. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 103 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net or leave me an interesting voicemail. I'll put that up as well. This one's called Info. Mark, please send me the survival guide, coast to coast, and 12 picks. Also, just a tip, most people, I think, are getting videos from YouTube. The problem is you never mention full dates and times on your radio broadcast. Saying something is coming up in December could have been last December, for all we know. Giving full dates and times would eliminate a lot of searching back and forth. Love what you're doing. Keep up the, the honest good work. P.S. I saw a video debunking the flat earth made by two young ladies and a helicopter. There was also a guy in that video. That's the one by the Discovery Channel. Uh, regarding curvature, have you seen it? Comments, yeah, I hate it. Uh, the the one we debunked that Discovery video uh, almost immediately after we found it. So if you get a chance, uh, check it out. Uh, basically, it was edited to, to know... Oh my God, it was edited a lot. Uh, and we, we think there was some uh, video doctoring in there. So check it out when you get a chance. This one's called Link to My Friends Flat Earth Realization. It's on Facebook. And what is the story? It is a Flat Earth story on Facebook called Remigio Pereira was live at Austin Bennett. There's a Flat Earth story there. Hmm. Okay, thank you for that. This one's called From Fox News, NASA's InSight spacecraft lands on Mars. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll be getting a few of those today, definitely. That's from Fox. This one's called Maybe Not for Air Reading. Maybe. Okay, you know what? I'm going to read it anyway. Hi, Mark. Thanks for doing that interview on Kansas City, Missouri, 98.9 The Rock Morning Show. That's my hometown wherein my church friends reside. Everyone listens to Johnny Dare in Kansas City, Missouri, in Kansas. I will say he resembles a lot like the Dana, Danny Bonaducci show, even with that same whiskey, gravelly voice. I shared it on my Facebook wall, but for all I can see, it's a visual seed planted. Even if no one is brave enough to come out of the Flat Earth closet and second a Facebook post with a thumbs up or comment, either way, I'm hopeful. Truly, my heart aches for everyone that everyone would know about what's really going on. To wake them up, even my fellow brethren, that they come out of Babylon, be holy, sanctified vessels for his spirit to reside. I am not qualified to represent Flat Earth, and I'm not looking to bring shame for fear of my ignorance on it. But I do stand on the Bible. It's a book about us, for us, <clears throat> desperately walking what I'm talking. These stiff-necked people are deep asleep. The struggle is real, waking those around me up in my own backyard ministry. I have so much to learn, and deep and the deep end goes to infinity. You are so patient with me and so many others. Yet another great example you set. Thank you. I'm going to try to not jump to email you, but it's so nice getting such a quick response, just knowing you're there for all to use. It's a benchmark I wish more held to. I'm looking to call in one day. That'd be cool. I'll, I'd try to nutshell my testimony or the key verses that did it for me or just the fact that I truly didn't feel like I had a testimony till. Flat Earth Clues or Rob Skiba. And it clicked right when I was thinking more into the Tower of Babylon. The Bible can be taken literally. I suppose I was from a disparate 
dispensational background. That's a new word for me. I'm sold on flat earth. I see the struggle of waking all folks to the truth of how we've been deceived. I suppose if you wanted to read this on air, you could. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks, Hank. You're welcome, Hank. This one's called Meteors. Mark, this may sound stupid. I really know nothing about Flat Earth and it's relevant to my faith. I'm interested and I wonder how we see meteors burning through our atmosphere. And I also wonder where the craters came from if the Earth, if we have an impenetrable dome. False. Uh, his name is Faults, F-A-U-L-T-S. Uh, meteors, ro throwing rocks into an aquarium. And as far as the craters, I think the craters are produced mainly between civilizations, like the giant one that's the Gulf of Mexico and the one in Air the smaller one in Arizona and stuff like that. I think it's just part of terraforming that's happened between civilizations. I don't think... And by the way, as far as impenetrable, yeah, impenetrable to us, not to, not to who built it. Just saying. I mean, the, the lid on an aquarium is impenetrable to the fish. Not to the guy that made the aquarium or owns it. This one's called Insight Mars Landing. Hi, Mark. This is the first time I am sending you an email. I've been wrestling with the whole flat earth concept for several months now. So far, I am still undecided. I have a question that I tried to find the answer to myself, but I just can't. I thought it would be simple, but after numerous Google searches, I am no closer to the answer than when I started. Here's the question. Are they claiming that the live depiction of the landing on Mars by Inside is actually being filmed and streamed live to us or a computer-generated depiction as it is happening? It's computer-generated de depiction. It has to be. Uh, do you have any information about this that may be helpful to me? No, I do not. I am just going crazy seeing this whole flat earth thing both ways right now. I know there are real conspiracies, <laughs> real conspiracies, and that hundreds of people can be complicit. However, something of this magnitude with millions, wouldn't have to be millions, being complicit knowingly or unknowingly is quite a challenge to believe. Yet, I have been in a plane and wondered why the Earth below looks so flat. Why the horizon stayed just slightly below eye level. Why I could see things like Catalina Island from Newport Beach. Why something appears to have gone over the horizon but can be brought back into view with a telescope. You and others on YouTube do a great job answering most of my questions from a flat Earth perspective. But then something like, <laughs> really? Something like the InSight landing on Mars makes me question things again. because you know, It's only because it's on television. That's why you're questioning it. Uh, it just seems that if this is a lie, it would be harder to pull off than actually going to Mars. How hard is it to uh, create a computer animation and just feed it through the video? Not that hard. It does look like some of the footage from the moon landings was definitely faked. However, that doesn't mean it all was. Oh, my friend, it's it's in your head. And 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 I've heard this from other people, which they say, well, just because some some of the Apollo footage is faked doesn't mean the entire space program is faked. It's like, oh uh, yeah, it does, because it, in fact, it's the old crime thing. If you're going to shoot one person, you might as well shoot everyone in the room because the punishment's still going to be the same. You got nothing to lose at that point. And that's the same thing with Apollo. Look, if you fake something in the space program, you might as well fake it all. Because if you get caught faking anything, you're you're done. It's it's over. Um, this letter is longer than I intended. Thank you so much for your time and effort in this. I hope the holidays are good for you this year. Sincerely, Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. Awesome. This thing's called The Amazing Jonathan from Jersey. Mark, I recently listened to a video you released, but I believe it was actually taped from some time back, which featured call-ins, and one of the callers happened to be a former co-host of yours, Jonathan from Jersey. On occasion, I would listen to your productions on TFR uh, with J Jonathan, and you two seemed like a good tag team, but after I heard that short blurb of him calling in and you cut cutting the call short, I played it over and over, and that didn't seem like the same person. I don't doubt it was the same physical person, but something had changed in the way he sounds. I think he may have gone through some traumatic emotional spirit experience, like divorce type of problem. One other thing it could be is the heavy metal poisoning. He did one of his independent shows on TFR where he was recommending e eating borax, which could be contaminated with heavy metals. I was disheartened to hear him almost stalk you via phone on the air because I thought it seemed beyond something like that. I hope he's doing well, and I also understand if you keep your distance. That's from Mickey Murray. Great name, by the way. And uh, no, Jonathan had, he left the show. There was, I'll give you the, the short version. He had a problem with 
uh, Orphan Red uh, out of Canada, and the, those two kind of had a falling out. And the problem happened when Orphan called into the show, and what Jonathan had failed to realize was that when we're on commercial break, the nobody else can hear us except the person people that are on hold on TFR. If the people on hold are on hold, they can hear everything you're saying in the background. So you got to be kind of careful what you're talking about. And Jonathan just started going off on her in a, in a big, big way. I mean, just popping off uh, about about uh, Orphan. And he didn't know. And I did not tell him that that what was happening. And she, she hung up. And then uh, she made a video about him in response the next day. And he got really bent out of shape. And I think he posted this big, long opus on her Facebook page. And then it was sent to me. And it basically said that he he was leaving the show. And he he went the other route. And that was, look, if you're, you're talking bad about somebody and they walk around the corner, you either fess up to it or you or you go the other way and he went the other way which was you know what I'm glad I'm glad I was caught talking uh crap about you and and let me let me say a few more things and shortly afterwards he got uh in, into his second divorce and it was really unfortunate so your question there about did he go through a divorce another divorce yes he did and honestly I don't even know if he's alive right now I had heard a rumor that he committed suicide I cannot confirm that, but nobody knows where he is. I mean, there's there's not a puff of smoke anywhere to hint where he may have gone. So if anybody knows, that's great. Fantastic. But I got a funny feeling that the rumor is uh, is true. Anyway, thanks uh, for asking that question, Mickey. This one's called a Globe Firmament. Hi, Mark. If you read this on the show, my last name is pronounced Bastash like mustache. Okay. Uh, just a quick thought on the form of the firmament. Please ignore if you've talked about this a lot before. Do you think that the firmament could be a globe? No, I do not. Like the toys you get from those toy claw machines where you lift the plastic bubble out of the goodies inside. Oh, that's good. Um, could the flat plane on the earth actually be placed inside the firmament as the dividing line between an upper half firmament and a lower half firmament? Sure. Why not? Uh, very possible. Uh, that is two firmaments placed together seamlessly to form a whole sphere with the flat earth suspended and extending through the central circumference at the equator point of the firmament bubble. Thus, we would have the perhaps aesthetically pleasing contrast of the flat earth positioned within the global firmament. As always, your thoughts are welcome. Best regards, Steve. And yes, yeah, Steve, it, very possible. Sure. Why not? Although I got I to gotta give you a little grief here because it sounds like you really, really want to hold on to the globe. You don't have to. You do not have to hold on to the globe. I mean, just, just hold on to the flatness. If you can, embrace the flatness. This one's called U.S. Scientists Launch World's Biggest Solar Geoengineering Study. That's from The Guardian, who's doing, a, ironically enough, doing a, a documentary on the flat earth. They, they attended the Denver conference. And the title is called U.S. Scientists Launch World's Biggest Solar Geoengineering Study. Yeah, they want to study the sun. Fantastic. That's from Julia. Thank you for that. This one's called New Flat Earth Vid. Hey, Mark, Sean from Greenwood, Indiana here again. I posted another short vid. Please check it out when you can. It has some strong language, but it's certainly justified in this case. There's an audio rip from a movie, so you'll dig it since you enjoy movie references. And the video is called NADA Promo. So instead of NASA, it's NADA, N-A-D-A. So you can type in NADA Promo with the parentheses F-E short, and it's there. And that's from Say Row. Thank you, Say. This one's called A Mysterious Radioactive Source is Melting Antarctica from Beneath. Good morning, Mark. Thought this article about heating beneath Antarctica might be saying more than it actually actually puts into words love your stuff keep it up and keep smiling eh that's from ed and yeah it's from ancientcode.com mysterious radioactive sources melting antarctica from beneath that's literally the name of the article cool this one's called suggestion hi mark i'm a huge fan just a couple things that might be able to help you out one, have you ever noticed that all planes have their windows pointing out or up? Take a look at the A380 or the 747. They are both double-decker, but surprise, surprise, nobody can look down. 
This is the same with all high altitude passenger planes. Uh, okay, yes I have, but at the same time, you gotta understand how an airplane is, is designed. All the baggage claim and cargo is below you. So yeah, that'd be a cool, a neat selling point to, for somebody, which would be, hey, let's make a plane with some windows that face the bottom, like glass bottom boats. Uh, but there's, it's all, all baggage claim down there. You gotta put the baggage somewhere and they're not gonna put it above you. I mean, I suppose you could, but it, it, it's not its not a bad idea, but it's its more efficient if the baggage stuff is all below you. Just saying. Two, we have little boxes in our pockets that can take pictures, call others, and browse the internet. But a globe projection cannot be made flat. More like the globe is fake. Check out debates between so-called projections. Okay. Three, certain places on Earth are called dark sky communities because they have so little... Uh, light pollution that stars are incredibly clear if this existed on a sphere like NASA claims then clouds of Chinese made pollution would travel around and block the stars as in most places hmm that's from miles uh, interesting points miles I, so I, I like some of them all right moving on let's go to oh look here's another one from Fox News Mars insight lander shows off first image of Mars Yep, I got a few of those. That's awesome. Really great. This one's called Forensic Science. Hey, Mark was listening to John Stossel uh, in his Forensic Science piece. Listen to the attorney's comments about the lab coats in the last two minutes. And this is from Virgil in Traveler's Rest. And the quote is, he's, he did a quote for me. We don't not, oh, know science or math from law school. If someone shows up in a white lab coat, says they're accredited, good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. And he's taking some of that from uh, my Flat Earth Clues, the Code of Credibility. This one's called, Was It the Moon? Hey there, my friend Mark. I researched the Flat Earth and it changed my life and I told all my friends around who supported me. I believe in all what the Bible says and Flat Earth is true just i still have some questions about the moon and yeah, always the questions uh please can you reveal to me what is the moon uh the moon is a wonderful cute little night light how's that i saw that there are lunar waves but i think they hide our moon and that it's a hologram yeah very possible actually but still i don't know if the moon is flat too or what is on the other side do you know something about that is there is there grass or ocean <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks for your links and answers. Anyway, may God bless you. And that's from Marian Karali from Slovakia. She's 29. Wait, I, I hope. Yeah, Marian. Cool. Uh, no, I, I look, the moon is not what you think it is. I usually refer people to the, the moon light temperature challenge, which is, you know, you can, uh, what's the temperature of the moonlight versus the temperature of the moon chain, uh, sorry, the moon shade that will surprise you. And as far as what's on the other side of the moon, I don't know. Is it two-dimensional or three-dimensional? Only well, the builders know for sure. Moving on. This one's called, My Interest is Peaked. Hi, Mark. Recently, I've been watching videos on YouTube of the moon and what looks to me like some kind of objects flying around. While watching a few of these videos, I was introduced to the P900 camera. I stumbled across a video of a couple people on a beach, and they were zooming in on ships that had long before been lost to the naked eye. At the point that they could not be seen, I assumed, it was because of the curvature of the Earth. I didn't pay a lot of attention at school, but I do remember being taught that the horizon line is just over three miles from the eye to the curvature, because that's what I was taught. When the camera started to slowly zoom the lens zoom the lens out, I couldn't believe my eyes when they all came into crisp, sharp focus. As I watched the video, I kept trying to think of a reason that I could still see them, but I couldn't figure it out. I just couldn't comprehend what I was seeing. I have since come across your video series on Flat Earth Clues and been trying to catch up. While watching your series, what keeps conflicting in my head is UFOs. I think there is so much proof of visitation from ancient art to military pilots and astronauts coming forward after retirement that is to me can't, can't be denied any longer. So I'm thinking, are they stuck in here with us or do they have a way around it? Yeah, well, that's the big question. 
I believe in them too. I've, I've seen them myself uh, with night vision binoculars many, many times for years. And do I think that uh, that's the big question? Are they stuck in here with us? Or can they can they get come and go as they please? Or can some come and go as they please and some are stuck in? It could be a, a both situation. Uh, I don't trust any government as far as I could throw them, and I wouldn't put anything past them. I'm sure <clears throat> this is no different than most things in life follow the money. I wonder if the Rockefellers and Rothschilds and their friends fit into all of this because they are who has the money and power. Sincerely, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Do I mean, do did the, the high finance uh, families from long ago, did they know? Yeah, probably. But remember, even if let's say you're um, uh, one of the, the super, super rich families from a long time ago, until the internal combustion is invented, you say you knew in 1800, there's nothing you can do about it. Literally nothing. I mean, yeah, you can you can shape uh, some policies and some pu public opinion here and there, but you can't even prove it until you start getting decent aircraft, which didn't happen until the really like the 1930s, 1940s. So what do you know? What do you know at that point? Not a lot. This one's called FE from Not So Down Under. Hi, Mark. My name is Dave Runham. I live in Brisbane, Australia, and thanks to you and Rob Skiba and a few others, I have had interesting last few months. I'm pretty well and truly on the road to believing that our creator has placed us on a large flat plane. It has cost me a few friends and family relationships so far, but I'm amazed at how many people are open to it. Australia is starting to awaken. It's funny. I've been a Bible-believing Christian my whole life. Weirdly, many years ago, I was called a flat earther by atheist work colleague, and back then I laughed at him, shook my head, and said, no way was I a flat earther. I was big into creation science stuff and had never entertained the possibility of such a thing or that there was another possible design to our cosmos. I have wrestled with it for months now. I bought the Nikon B900 and taken pics of cargo ships way out to sea, which can't be seen with the naked eye from the beach, taking detailed pictures of the moon, which were clearer and more detailed than images of other objects no way as far away on Earth. Taken pictures of small towns 30 kilometers away, which should be possible with that amazing camera. Uh, but I have always thought, how does the water stick upside down to a ball, which is also spinning at 1,200 uh, miles per hour? It has never sat right with me, and now I know why. Thanks for to you guys sticking your neck out. Now, I would like to suggest that all these conferences and Flat Earth Friends YouTubers that we crowdfund our own balloon rocket camera mission to space and take our own images of the Earth and Moon, use Facebook and YouTube to advertise this and get this happening. Also, you guys need to come to Australia and have a conference and go out to Aries Rock and stand on it and see the flat red center of Oz. P.S. If you come to Oz... Uh, he means Australia, but they spell it OZ sometimes, which is cool. Uh, look me up or want to check something out from not so down under, down under. Drop me a line. That's from Dave. Thank you, Dave. Always nice to get stuff from overseas. This one's called I'm Hooked. Hello, Mark. The title of the email explains my current time frame regarding the flatter theory thank you for your efforts i've watched the 14 clues your interview with russell brand and i listened to another hour and a half long interview today while at work that's my fe background and i've been sharing these ideas with a good friend who just so happens to be in the middle school science teacher though he has to teach mostly what he is told to he secretly holds doubts about the moon landing and the shape of the globe he poses a question that i'm not qualified to answer but maybe you are his concern regarding the fe model is about days and seasons there we go uh it is his hypothesis of th of sorts that we can't have seasons in the manner that we do on a flat earth moving closer and further to the sun on a globe model makes sense and explains the fluctuations in seasons and the flat earth model does not account for this uh, yes, it absolutely does. Uh, there's a fa fantastic graphic that uh, Rob Skeeb has got on his channel about the sun and the moon uh, moving around like a needle on a record player. It's, it's, it's really, really great. Does this question make sense in the manner I asked? Yep. Uh, if it does, please help me understand. Thank you for your time. Best, Bill. Hope you're listening, Bill. This one's called Flat Earth Test. 
Hi, Mark. I think I have figured out a rather simple method to prove Earth's surface either level or curved. We need a 3D laser imaging device attached to a drone. The drone would be programmed to fly at a steady elevation from one point to another on a large body of water for 50 miles or more. The 3D laser imaging device would scan the surface of the water for 50 miles. The final image turned sideways around should reveal curvature or not. Hope this sparks some new motivations. Peace, Chard Molten. And I've never known anyone named Chard, C-H-A-R-D. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting idea. I, I think you need some special software to do it. And it's a really powerful laser to image. I mean, you're talking about um, technology that's usually used in science fiction. I mean, going all the way back to Aliens, where you have a laser scanning device that could scan a room. Scanning a room a lot easier than scanning the ground. But, but I like the idea. I like where your head's at. This one's called Watch Flat Earth and the Sides of the North with David Carrico and Zen Garcia on YouTube. That's the title of the video. Yeah, cool. I uh, got a chance to see Zen again at the conference in Denver. It's awesome. This one's called Very Important. Hello, dear. I am a 22-year-old girl from Cape Verde Island, and I have an important discussion I would like to discuss with you. If you permit me, have a great weekend. Best regards, Dara. Oh, I see what this is. This is one of those emails that I'm totally going to answer. <laughs> She sounds really interesting. That is interesting of all, as all those people that tell me my bank information needs to be updated. I feel bad for those people, that anyone that falls for that. Uh, this one's called Flatter Thanks. Mr. Sergeant, thanks for your clue videos and efforts. I watched you uh, in your 2018 Canadian conference video. Nice job, sir. I'm not sure the world is flat, but I'm sure ain't convinced it is round. I'll never have the time or the money to do the long distance cavern tests or other expensive scientific proving experiments, but I will look at simple things like who said the earth was round, why the size varies from various old smart Greeks. The real question is, assume the earth is flat and somehow this gets exposed without que beyond questioning. What is the outfall? Just in the USA, how does the government explain NASA, all the money spent in space and go to the moon? If they lied about NASA and the moon in space, then every other conspiracy gets to at least become plausible. Yep, you're absolutely right. I think for a moment folks will be angry, but it will pass and the government will get a pass because we in the USA won't hold anyone accountable and we will revert back to the day-to-day -day activities, just like your mice in the aquarium video. Mice in the aquarium? <laughs> no, mice in the terrarium. But you know, if you put mice in an aquarium, they're not going to last long. Um, we won't make the effort to change things. We will accept a flat earth if proven, complain how we got hosed by our government, and carry on because there will not be any real impact on us if the earth is flat. We will still buy groceries, need a place to live, talk on our phones, watch TV, etc. Sorry for the run on. I think flat earth is great, challenging, and fun to talk about. Folks at work think I'm a bit of a nut, and perhaps they are right. If you can't explain it uh, around planets and we went to the moon, but you believe it's real, just holler louder. That's what folks seem to do. Again, thanks for your videos and shows. Best regards, Tim. And yeah, I, I do disagree. I mean, yes, there'll be some people and I what, one out of 10 people I talk to, they say that, what does it matter? What does it matter if the earth is flat? Uh, you know, I, my job still sucks. My family still hates me. I'm in my second divorce, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's like, yeah, it, it's, it doesn't matter until you believe. And once you believe, then everything changes. Literally, the, the world is under a different type of light. You start looking around. You never will look at the moon the same way again. You'll never look at the stars the same way again. It kind of feels like you're um, in sort of a, a simulation. I mean, it feels that way. You feel like you're in a building. You're looking up and it's like, oh, yeah. And, and you're just waiting for the rest of the mystery to be unveiled. And it's comforting. Uh, now some people say, oh, you know, it's claustrophobic. You're taking that giant universe away and you're turning it into a one-room apartment. And it's like, yeah, but it's a really nice one-room apartment. It's, it's big. And r would you rather be this tiny little rock with no meaning at all flying through an endless impossible universe at like five different speeds and, and directions? And that, that, that's okay. You know, that doesn't make you feel insignificant. Uh, but rather, would you rather be in a building where it was built just for you and you have purpose, you have meaning, you're special? 
lets me sleep at night. Anyway, this one's called FE. Mark, I have seen where a person used a phone application to show no angle change is recorded when flying halfway across the FE. My question is, if a person zeroed the phone for angle change, but it turned the phone 90 degrees on its side and traveled across a Great Britain, should there be a recordable difference in angle? Does this question even make sense? What a mess trying to get cooperation from governments to prove the shape of the earth, or they already know and work to cover this up. Most people don't know, just so you know. As far as the the, the application, I don't know. You're going to have to ask somebody else on that. Uh, some people have used their phones, but the average person doesn't know how to um, how to work that particular configuration. The uh, getting most governments, most governments do not know. Remember, people say, oh, it's mil- there have to be millions of people in on this. No, no, no. It's so big that you would only need a handful of people to know. The telemetry guys that, w- that are programming the, the telemetry for any of the space programs, yes, that would take a little doing. But even the astronauts wouldn't need to know. Yeah, they'd, they'd know they were faking something. But remember, they're all military, so they wouldn't need to be briefed on it. Just have them sign the the waivers, uh, the disclosure agreements, and they're told basically it's above your pay grade, and most soldiers go along with that. And it's like no, the old saying: you're 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 here to follow orders. You're not here to ask why. I th- and remember, most of the Air Force guys that leave the astronaut program, they come out full bird colonels. And any ask anyone in the military if you're a full bird colonel, you know how to keep your mouth shut. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth. Hey, bro, how are you doing? I am just taking the time to reach out to you. Keep up the good work. I am spreading this truth in my little circle and would like to expand. And that is from Carlos. And Carlos sent a pic. Oh, very cool. He he went to a space thing and he's actually got, um, he made up a, like a jersey. I've never seen this yet. Uh, it says flat earth on it with a number three. Oh, I'm totally using that for a um, slideshow and or thumbnail. That's great. Thank you for that. I'm going to put that in my to-do pile. This one's called Who Needs GPS? The Forgotten Story of ETAC's Amazing 1985 Car Navigation. And you can look it up at fastcompany.com. Who needs a GPS? The forgotten story. Okay. Uh, It says a navigation system for automobiles could, honey surmised, operate based on dead reckoning and comparing one's current location to known points on a map, a technique known as map matching. It wouldn't need satellites at all, just a good digital map, a good compass, and some sensors. Then it could display the result on an electronic screen. Wow. That's back in 1985. So check that out if you get a chance. That's one. This one's called Kiss, Legendary Rock Stars, Flat Earth Mention. Hi, Mark. Check this out. Uh, nine minutes, 18 seconds. That's from Stig. And yeah, there was this interview where, let me pull this up real fast. Kiss talks about their, the, the, the video is called Kiss, the band. Talks their end of the world, or some end of the road world tour. And it's on a YouTube channel called Build Series. And Gene Simmons actually mentions in passing Flat Earth. Now he doesn't he doesn't say about talk about it in a good way, but he mentions it. I mean, it's it's getting out there in people's heads. The the verbiage is being used a lot more often than it used to be able to. This one's called Five Questions, Twelve Slides. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, Mark. I love the work that you have out on YouTube. It's very informative, as you know, with great details. I would greatly appreciate if you could please send me the five questions, 12 slides. Thank you in advance. May God continue to bless you and and work. Uh, That's from Brother Charles. Cool, Charles, thank you for that. This one's called Space Fantasy Pick from Coloring App. And let me view this real quick. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Yeah, space. It's it's an astronaut riding a unicorn on the moon with a lot of celestial objects around him or her. Very colorful. And he's catching a star with what appears to be a butterfly net. You don't see a lot of butterfly nets anymore. Hmm. This one's called Please Send Pics for FE. Hi, Mark. Do send the pictures for FE. Thanks. Long time listener. First time emailer. I listen to you and Patricia weekly. Thanks for all the valuable info. Keep it flat from Stan. 
Thank you, Stan. This one's called LOL 12 picks, please. And there's no spinning wheel. In fact, there's no body at all. It should just send the picks. That's from Chris Irvin. Oh, I'm sorry, some textage pop up. Uh, just cause everyone else wants a copy. Thank you, Chris. Cool. This one's called, I am so excited. Hi, Mark. I am so excited about the upcoming conference and about the celebrity that is going to come forward. I still think and hope it'll be Mel Gibson. Stay flat, Alma. <laughs> it wasn't Mel Gibson. That's for sure. This one's called Flat Horizon. Mark, just climbed the small mountain today after church while listening to your email show. I was It was almost dark when I got to the top, so I answered your question about dross and then took this short video have an awesome evening my truth-seeking brother and that's from william thank you william it's awesome i will take a look at it put that in my to do pile this one's called 12 picks mark please send me the 12 pictures thank you for doing what you do that's from joel meyer uh, but got a few more of these I'm just let's just punch through them uh, i want the 12 pictures donkey uh, Air Force brat living in San Diego. That's from Don Hay. Cool. This one's called Flatter 3D Model with Firmament Stars. Hello, Mark. I'm interested in buying Flat Earth 3D Model. Where can I buy it? Thanks. That's from D1 Driftman. And yeah, if you want a um, Flat Earth 3D Model, the best place to go right now would be to Chris Pontius's website, which is flatearthmodels.com. Another one called, hi, Mark, 12 slides, five science questions, 12 pictures, please. 12 slides, what, 12 slides and the 12 pictures are the same thing, just so you know. Hi, Mark, I've just finished listening to your 91st episode of Q&A and loved it. Thank you. I started researching Flat Earth Concept over two years ago, and it literally felt like coming home. I've always found those spinning ball opinions from school quite weird. You guessed it. Can I please have your 12 slides and five science questions too, and also audio interview you did on Coast to Coast, please? Thanks again, and keep inspiring. Greetings from Brisbane, Australia. In case you happen to be visit visiting Kangaroo Land, please email me. Kind regards, uh, Rado. That's awfully nice, Rado. I don't know, maybe I might go down to uh, Australia soon. We'll see. This one's called Spacesuit Weight. Google search, do squats, Mark. Uh, the Apollo suit including the life support backpack, weighed about 180 pounds. My ass, it did. The shuttle suit, including the life support system, weighs about 310 pounds. Uh-huh. The suit itself weighs about 110 pounds. If an astronaut weighing 175 pounds wears a complete suit, the total weight is about 485 pounds. Uh, Mark, NASA is claiming the space suit is this weight, that people are not strong enough to hold this out of water. Laughing out loud. Have you not seen the movie Men of Honor? That's what why they only do tests in water they say it's too heavy mark better do squats uh get ready to hold 310 pounds good luck uh -huh. this one's called 12 slides please thank you from james cool this one's called is there anything that i can do to the club mark hi mark my name is ahmad I'm a chef from Jakarta, Indonesia, and I'm ready to be a volunteer to the Flat Earth Club. Sorry if my English was not good enough, though. Uh, yeah, I, the the first thing I tell everybody is is spread the word, but do it quietly. You know, don't. I mean, if you want to do activism, that's your thing. Great, fantastic. But it, I, what I mean by that is, as far as family and friends and coworkers, be careful. I mean, you've heard me read this on on how many emails do I have to read, where people all of a sudden they get so excited about flat Earth they go to their family and they say. Oh, hey, by the way, uh, you know, I think the earth is flat. They do this at the dinner table. What do you think people are going to say? I'd, I'd be more stunned if they actually looked and said, hey, you know what? I'm with you. No, you got to convince them. Remember what it took for you to get there. This one's called No Subject. Mark, so I have a question. I was at the mall yesterday and went into the Vans shoe store and saw a whole bunch of NASA Vans for sale. If NASA is funded by taxpayers' money, how do they get to make deals like that with companies promoting their BS? I never agree to that. Just a thought. That's from Jay Bibbs. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, if NASA is putting their logo on everything, do they get paid for it? Good question. Uh, this one's called Asking the Bigger Questions by Hith. Hey, Mark, just wanted to send you this garbage. Enjoy. And it's a YouTube link. 
And where's it going? It's going to a video that's called Flat Earth Ask the Bigger Questions by Hith. And it was published November 5th, 2018. The guy's got 26,000 subs. It's got uh, 1.3 thousand up and only 100 subs, 100 thumbs down. Interesting. I have not, I had not seen this video for whatever reason. So I'm going to check that video out when I get a chance after I'm done with this. Cool. This one's called Mark. Have you seen this on Drudge? Uh, Mark, Google has enlisted NASA to help it prove quantum supremacy within months. And it's from technologyreview.com. And I will take a look at that. That's from Nick. Nick Terziski. This one's called Introducing the McSargent Ingredients. Five questions, 12 slides, and two coast-to-coast -coast interviews and one survival guide. Yeah, I know. It started out with just um, coast-to-coast -coast interviews. Or no, it started out with a sur survival guide, and then people wanted the coast-to-coast -coast interviews, and then the Just Jack slides came in, and then the Canadian conference with the five questions. So now I've got four things I can send people. Uh, three of the things I can email to anyone that wants them, and then the coast-to-coast, -coast has I've got to send it to you through WeTransfer, which is like Dropbox, uh, because it's the, the, it, the audio files are too big for... Um, just regular old email but this guy made this special uh mcdonald's big mac and i've never been a big mac guy mostly because of the special sauce not a big fan of the special sauce try ordering it the problem is i like the concept but try ordering it without the special sauce it's a special order you get put in a separate line and it's it's awful it takes forever so anyway thank you good for frank uh who sent me that slide and you probably saw that on a thumbnail recently this one's called No Subject. Hi, Mark. God is everywhere because God is me, you, and all the things we do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are lyrics with these words out there. Understand that we all have the power. When we all give the power, we all give the best. Every minute of an hour, don't think about a rest. Then you all get the power. You all get the best when everyone gives everything and every song everybody sings yes i know these are lyrics too but they are very true uh what i'm trying to say is does anyone think that repeating a song on the radio works differently as opposed to repeating advertisements advertisements have become propaganda so is the controlled education system repeating the earth is a ball is bad and that's why all the work done by people that know the earth is flat is good there is good music and bad that's why so many musicians whom are uh, awoken try to inform us of what they know please look into the bringing of the mexican national anthem at the beginning of the mexican grand prix formula one from october 28 2018 some officials made the flatter sign i don't believe it's a sign every mexican must make during the anthem because only two people did as far as i know could you send me the power out pr the power out prep list please okay did i respond to this guy yes i did uh, and but I'm, I'm going to let you guys know if you send me an email and you don't say that you want something until the very end of the email, I'm not going to see it. Chances are until I, I read the email on air. So if you want the prepper guide or the five questions or the picks or the uh, coast to coast interviews, you put it in the title or put it in the first couple lines, because that's what I, I generally look at when I'm skimming through emails. So thank you for that. This one's called Compasses and Possible FE Experiment. Dear Mark, I want to ask you how I should understand compasses in the context of flat earth. Is a compass a reliable navigational tool in a flat earth model? Yeah, it is. It works almost the same, as a matter of fact, because <coughs> the compass will go after magnetic north and magnetic north is at the center of the map. Also, how should one understand the concept of south? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, luckily for you, the compass will keep pointing north and it'll keep dominating north. In fact, I had an Australian military um, guy who said that there is no dominant south pole magnetically. And he said anyone that tells you difference is, is lying through their teeth. Uh, I asked this because I was considering an experiment that I have not seen on the internet. Perhaps it has been tried, but I have not seen it. Two people could stand on the equator a short distance apart, perhaps 100 yards or so, and walk due south. On a southern Earth model, the two should gradually approach each other, although at what rate I cannot say. On a flat Earth model, the two should gradually get further apart, provided they were walking perfectly south. 
oh, you know, this is not a bad experiment. It then occurred to me that a compass might not be reliable for this purpose or that the definition of south might make this experiment impossible. Do you have any thoughts? I apologize in advance if you have answered this question elsewhere. Thanks for your time, Paul. You know, it's not a bad, that's not a bad question. Uh, you'd have to get a really precise compass, though, to do it. And I don't know how far you the people would have to get away before they start noticing that they were spreading out. If that indeed, if whoever built this place didn't account for something like that. Interesting concept, though. That is that is a new experiment I had not heard of yet. And I've read a lot of stuff in the last three years. Had not heard of that. It's good. Thanks, Paul. This one's called Correcting record strange world October 30th broadcast hi Mark I called in that night and spoke with you about the guy claiming flat earth math was way off and then said it was pretty accurate for the first thousand miles I'm Nick in the 408 area code and I was three sheets to the wind really people calling me up drunk on my show no I why I've never heard of such a thing uh, uh for your information I will never call in that messed up so please don't refuse to let me on I, well, dude I, okay, first off, I don't have some weird detection ability on my call board that says, oh yeah, this guy's hammered and this guy's stoned. No, I just answer him. So if you're if you're high or drunk, I don't care. That's fine. Honestly, listening to my show, you're probably better off. Uh, now, to correct the record, a subsequent caller bantered with you for a moment. And then he said, I think I can quote this verbatim. That last caller, well, it wasn't the last caller. It was that guy, Nick. I recognize his voice and that guy is the greatest living guitar player in the world. I don't know who that guy in the 208 area code is, but I, I am not now, and I've never been the greatest living guitar player in the world. I will admit, when I was younger, I did play electric guitar in a series of semi-pro blues bands that never went anywhere, but I was never a great player. I was decent, but third rate, maybe second rate on my best nights. So again, I promise I will never call into Strange World that messed up again. Thanks for all you do, uh, M. Nick. And I don't, he, I don't think he's giving away his name here. And Grant, look, you want to remain anonymous? That's cool. Totally fine with me. But I do think he's, that guy was probably Eddie Van Halen or Ted Nugent or uh, one of the lead, sing, lead guitarists from uh, Scorpions. I don't know. This one's called No Subject Mark. Just letting you know this radio station is in Bloemfontein, South Africa trying to mock flat earth most of it is in african uh the, the language african sorry a r a f r i k a a n regards jis j y s and i will take a look at that it's three megs oh there's an audio file there cool all right i'll check that out when i get a chance this one's called just discovered the flat earth four days ago i'm 45 Hello, Mark. I saw a Q drop that said to look at Flat Earth and eventually saw this video of yours among many. Let me click on to make sure it's it's mine or just a mirror of mine. And it actually is the Flat Earth Clues introduction on my channel. Cool. I remember watching an original Star Trek show as a rerun in 1991 where they encounter an asteroid with a civilization in it where said people don't know they live in an asteroid. And one man they meet in that asteroid said he walked into a forbidden area, climbed a mountain, and touched the sky. It's almost as if the writer knew what was going on. No, I mean, that's just that's just lottery ticket uh, stats there. And that is, and I've, I've mentioned this in several things, which is, if because we are so great at telling stories and writing science fiction, eventually one of those science fiction stories was going to be right. We there were so many different possibilities of what this world could be that we've covered literally the gamut. A anything you could think of, we've written books and and one, and television shows and movies on it. And now it, it, somebody was going to get it right, and more than one person was probably going to get it right. It's an interesting concept and very very plausible. So let's see, currently making my way through this playlist. Got it. Questions. Here we go. Here's the, always the questions. One, are there any satellites in orbit or is this what's going on? I think they're being held up by balloons. Uh, two, are there, are all flights from Sydney to Santiago always bookable, unbookable, canceled if you book or taking extra long with GPS off since in the Southern hemisphere, uh, if you manage to board? No, I don't. I think you can get on a flight from Sydney to Santiago. But you also got to remember there's a couple things that all that potentially could happen here. And the airlines don't tell you this. And I didn't even know it was a thing until a couple of years ago, which was if you land to refuel 
but nobody gets on or off the plane, it counts as a nonstop, which I think is fascinating. Uh, look that up if you get a chance. And, and there's these strategic little islands and, and airports. And they're not even airports. They're just refueling stations where planes land and they refuel and then they take off again. And it takes them sometimes an hour or so. And it's very, very strange. Uh, three, got a favorite link documenting the nuclear testing of the firmament dome. Uh, yeah, yes, I do. Uh, bet, and sorry, he ends this with best regards, Alan. Um, yeah, the, the best link is just to look up high altitude nuclear explosions. Just just look that up on, in Google and you'll find the, there's a great wiki link to it, which is how the United States government and the Soviet Union just started firing weapons from 1958 until 1962. Just kept firing weapons straight up. That's all they did for four years. So check that out if you get a chance. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, can you please send me the Survival Guide? Keep it flat. That's from Flatball. I'm going to give out her name. Her real name is Ashley. Ashley Brown. Thank you, Ashley. I did send it to her. This one's called Firmament. Good morning, Mark. I will call in today for your show. Sorry, it's been a while. Firing on all cylinders here, mate. And that's from Lincoln. Thank you, Lincoln. And yeah, just to remind people, if you're listening to this right now, the show, I, I, the radio show that you can call in on and ask me stuff live is on Tuesday nights on TFR Radio, which stands for Truth Frequency Radio. And it starts <clears throat> at 7 Pacific, that's 10 Eastern, and it runes for two hours. And tonight I actually have a paleontologist who wants to talk about dinosaurs, which is he believes in dinosaurs. And I do too, actually. And I, I know there's a, a bunch of conspiracy people that say the dinosaurs are absolutely not real and never have been. I go the other way, which is, I think they were real, but I don't think they're that old. Do I think they're 300 million years old and 400 million years old? No, I, I think the carbon dating system is complete trash and that they are, the, the dinosaurs were part of an earlier version of this. They were on. They were here before we were, and then they were terraformed off for whatever reason, and kind of like the giant trees, that sort of thing. And so this guy's going to come on and kind of fill you in on that. This one's called "Caught My Attention." Mark, I was listening to your Q and A ninety one, and you had a lot of requests for five qu questions and ten pictures. Oh, uh, it's twelve. It's twelve, not ten. Or was this is how grapevines screw things up? Or was it ten questions and five pictures? You know what? It's ten questions and five pictures. Let's just do that. And and two candy canes and three ostriches. Either way, I have no idea what they were referring to, but I am interested. So <laughs> could you also send me a copy of those? Thanks in advance and stay flat. That's from Mike. Yep. I sent him the three pictures and the thirty seven questions. This one's called Is ISS Porta Lou. Oh yeah, the ISS bathroom. Dear Mark, thank you for your videos. I'm a great, uh, it, it, they are great. I'm a recent convert about three weeks. Wow, that's not very long. I used to have a lot of fun over the years. When it came to global earth, I would jokingly argue that the word, world must be flat because you can't take a spirit level from any point of the compass to another around the world. You would always find it level. And I was taken seriously. It has backfired and I now see the world is indeed flat. Scripture, especially the book of Enoch. Well, all right. The book of Enoch isn't exactly scripture. I mean, it's not canonized, but it's one of those. If you had to like pick one of the top five books that didn't make it into the Bible, but are still lying around, Enoch would be way up there. Uh, are very true. And the reason we are on the earth is to build godly, righteous character. You know what? I'll go with that. It's good. It's good enough as any godly, righteous character. I have for years questioned the moon landings, JFK, 9-11. One thing that I have been waiting for NASA to answer, how do the astronauts manage to go to the toilet? How do they wipe their backsides? And on the ISS, how do they get their supply of toilet paper? And how do they dispose of it? Do they just throw it out the window? And what? And is that what we see and mistake for meteors? <laughs> it's like toilet paper. Toilet paper meteors? Nice. Yes, I know. Yeah, ISS is all fake. On a fine day, you may be able to see me wave to you from Perth and Western Australia. Keep up your fine radio show as well. I get it via YouTube. Regards, Paul Crespi. Thank you, Paul. That's awesome. This one's called Pronunciation of 
Guelph, Ontario uh, Film Festival. Hi, Mark, Jim, and I, well, mostly I, really look forward to the conference next week in Denver and seeing you again. I know you're doing well as I keep up with you weekly, my friend. I uh, just wanted to let you know you are pronouncing Guelph like this, Gilf. However, it should be pronounced like this, Guelph, G-W-E-L-F. When you list where the documentary will be playing next, most people will not know where Gilf is. Love your attempt at its pronunciation, though. Hugs to you, and that's from Bronca Moore up in Canada. And yeah, she's absolutely right. Uh, the The film festival, which which still the behind the curve documentary, which is uh, which was officially released, you can get it on Amazon and uh, iTunes and just about you just just type in behind the curve documentary in Amazon, you'll find it. Uh, it's still playing at film festivals and there are several festivals left, uh, some in Estonia, some in Moscow and, um, uh, one more up in Canada. And it's in a city that I'd never heard of, uh, uh, and it's spelled G U E L P H and that's in Ontario. And so I'd like to officially say it's pronounced Guelph. Of course, why don't they? Just put a W in there. It'd be easier. But you know what? America screws that stuff up too. Okay, let's find a fun one to end on. And maybe tomorrow I can I can punch through the most of the rest of these and actually get caught up. We'll see. This one's called Your Book. Dear Mr. Sergeant, saw your address in bol.com, want to contact you. I am from the Netherlands and a believer of the flat earth and God. Hope to see your email first. Kindly regards. Uh, Willibrardus, Willibrardus. Anyway, he's in the Netherlands. So did I write him back? I don't think I did. I should probably write him back and say, do you, do you, do you buy my book? I don't know. The book's called Flat Earth Clues. You can get it on Amazon. I mean, you could listen to it. If you want the audio version, you could just listen to it on YouTube or you can buy just the straight up audio version on audiobooks and all the other fun stuff. You know what? Let's not end on that one. Let's, let's end on something more fun. Let's end on, um, you know what, we'll end on this one. This is kind of fun because we're doing the license plate thing here in a few days. It's called Flat Earth License Plate. Hey, Mark, just want to share my new license plate. I did this for the young mind sitting in the back seat of their parents' car, looking at all the license plate passing by as I did when I was a child. It seems most of my peers, uh, I'm a 55-year-old female, are far too brainwashed to even look at the proof. Anyway, thanks for all you do. Enjoy the conference. Perhaps someday I can get my husband, a physicist, <laughs> to rethink his indoctrination uh, and we will attend. He fully understands all the other conspiracies but cannot fathom Flat Earth yet. I'm working on him. Take care. Brenda Roach in Maine. And her license plate says... Oh, yeah, there it is. Main. F-L-T-E-R-T-H. Very, very cool. That's going to be a thumbnail. It's going to be part of the uh, Flat Earth License Plate Compilation Slideshow. Awesome. So thank you for everybody who uh, emailed me so far and everybody's going to email in the future. Remember, my email address is msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.